Welcome to Tech Donations for Religious Organizations. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup Global. I'll be the host for today's event. And I've been with the organization for a little more than six years, and prior to that spent a decade working with small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California, where I was regularly the accidental techie, having to make technology decisions without many technology resources. And so I come to TechSoup uh, having many years of experience using TechSoup. So I'm a fan of our programs and hope that you will be too. You'll also see Ali Bezdikian who is helping manage the chat today. She's an interactive events and video producer here at TechSoup and will be on hand to help with any questions. A look at today's agenda. I'll go over an introduction of what TechSoup is and who we serve. We'll talk about benefits to religious organizations. We'll have a couple of opportunities to talk about religious organizations in the context of our programs. And then we'll talk about resources and how you don't have to go it alone. Then we'll walk through a live demo of TechSoup's donation programs and share some additional resources. TechSoup Global is a global network of 63 NGOs working in more than 120 countries around the world to provide the technology knowledge and resources so that you can better meet your mission. We do this all around the world, and we're working toward the time when every social benefit organization on the planet has all of those resources to operate at its full potential. And you can see that we have served more than 615,000 NGOs around the world. and proud to have done it. In that capacity, we do a variety of different programs. Most prominently is our technology products and grants, which have amounted to more than $4.8 billion delivered to the NGO sector. So we're very proud of that and hope that you'll also want to be a recipient of some of those donated products and services. In addition to the donated products, we provide a whole host of resources on TechSoup.org including articles, blog posts, community forums, local meetups and events, and webinars like this one. So we'll go through some of our website in just a few moments. But for now, I wanted to give you an example from a church that we met at the Catalyst Conference recently who shared their experience and how TechSoup has helped their organization better meet their goals and save money at the same time. I'm Jason with Casas for Cristo, and we have built 4,500 4, homes for families and been with TechSoup using their products for the last seven years, and they have literally saved us thousands of dollars. Nice. So that's just one example of the benefits to religious organizations. But here you can see on the screen more uh, examples and statistics about how far we have reached into the religious organization community and delivering more than $134 million in technology that's been distributed in the United States to nearly 20,000 religious organizations. Now a lot of that has happened very recently because many of the donation programs that we have managed over the years have excluded religious organizations for various reasons. And so you'll see that in 2014 alone, $54 million of that went to 10,000 religious organizations. So a large chunk of that $134 million has been delivered just in the past year. So we are really growing rapidly in our programs targeting religious organizations as we work on the relationships with our donor partners to expand the offerings to include churches, synagogues, mosques, and the whole host of religious and faith-based organizations. There's a little quote at the bottom of the screen about how TechSoup has helped their organization stay current and legal with their regularly updated software at a really reasonable cost. And we love hearing those kind of stories because we know that in the day-to-day -day work that you do, that you're providing services to your community and you're delivering um, direct service, you're delivering much needed resources to your community and every dollar that we help you save on the technology is a dollar that can be spent in your own community serving your audience. Here's another quick quote from another church, Bethany Presbyterian in Sacramento, about how we've really helped provide economically feasible software to upgrade their, com their computers and to continue offering services, and not only helping them with their computers to facilitate their own financial activities, but in communicating and supporting the people of their community. So we're proud to be able to do those types of things 
with our programs here at TechSoup. And you know, I imagine that many people who may not be already registered with TechSoup uh, can benefit from them. And if you are already registered and you haven't been back to visit us in a long time, you may find that there are a lot more products available that you can access than there were previously. We regularly conduct polls with the participants in our events, and this is one from a recent event where we asked whether their primary mission was a church, synagogue, mosque, some type of other religious or faith-based organization like a mission or Bible camp, a publisher or a seminary, um, if they were offering a secular service like a food bank or shelter services or counseling services, or if they were a school based out of a church, K-12, through or some other type of faith-based or religious organization. And so quickly, between the two of those, versus faith-based organization, because they may sometimes be used interchangeably, but they are two distinct systems uh, for our donation program. The reason for that is that under the IRS's those are codes that the IRS uses to identify the different types and subtypes of organizations for tax purposes. Those categories distinguish what donation programs uh, you are eligible to request donations from. So if you are a food bank, for example, or a shelter, and that's the primary work that you do, then you might fall into uh, you may be faith-based in your mission, but the actual work and service that you deliver is a secular type service in helping support the needs of your community. So if you provide housing or food or counseling, or you work with youth, or you're a Habitat for Humanity and you build houses, even if there's a faith basis to the work that you do or a mission-based basis to the, to the work that you do, the actual program delivery is a secular one. And we want to make sure that you're signed up and registered with TechSoup as a housing organization, a counseling organization, a youth serving, um, a food delivery, you know, that you are registered in the category that makes it possible for you to access the widest range of donations. Now at the same time, if your organization is a church, a synagogue, a mosque, and your primary mission is to provide faith services, religious services to your parishioners, your members, your regular attendees at mass or services, then you register as a religious organization and that determines what donation programs are open to you. So keep that in mind when you go through the process. And if you've already gone through the process at TechSoup and you're already registered, but you think you may need to shift that registration because you didn't realize when you registered that you should have been selecting housing services or that you should have been selecting domestic violence. Uh, services or shelter services as um, your primary work, then just give us a call and talk to somebody in our client services department. They'll talk you through the process and they can go ahead and shift your organization's registration to reflect the primary work that you do. So with that in mind, we like to make sure that you have the technology resources to help your organization. And so we'll talk about the donation programs in just a couple of minutes. But in addition to that, there are a lot of resources out there that can help you make the best technology decisions for your work. And aside from TechSoup, I wanted to highlight a couple here, one being Technologies for Worship magazine, which is a regularly published, I believe it comes out 12 times a year, magazine that you can get either in print or digital form or both if you prefer, and talks about the different tech needs that might resonate with you and your work. So if you need a video projector, if you need um, audio equipment to help make sure that your message reaches the back of the hall, those are the types of conversations and articles and content that they cover, uh, and I'm sure much beyond that as well. But you can find that in that magazine. And I also wanted to highlight Axia Concepts, who Brian Cole participated with us in a live event recently and didn't have the chance to join us today. But his work, he works uh, in a variety of capacities. He's the principal at Axia Concepts where he helps churches with their technology. And he's one example of you know, the allies you can find in your community who are doing this kind of work and delivering great um, services from coming into your office and helping you assess your website and helping you assess your tech needs on site for events. Um, so there are organizations like his and that can help you really find your way 
with decisions like this. Additionally, TechSoup, which I have already talked a bit about, we have community forums. We have events called Net Squared, local events all around the country and around the world where you can find groups in your area who are meeting to talk about the technology at their nonprofits. And so it will be a wide range of people uh, delivering different types of services at nonprofits. So it won't just be churches, but it's a great resource to tap into whether it be through our community forums, our articles, uh, blog posts. You know, we have a lot of content that compares you know, the different donor management systems. And we've dedicated more time to doing content that's specifically around the needs of churches and technology, so church management systems, um, what types of technical high-tech uh, offering plates there may be to allow the, your supporters to donate or give tithing type donations through high-tech means as opposed to actually putting it in an offering plate, for example. So we're writing more content like that regularly to try and meet your needs. And we'd welcome you to contact us about other types of content that you need so we can make sure we're providing it. Some additional resources are Technologies for Worship Magazine, which are, were, I already mentioned, Church Tech Today, Church Tech Arts, worshiptechdecisions.com, and we have a blog post that we highlighted at the end called Some Little-Known Faith-Based Technology Resources that highlights a whole bunch of individuals and publications that are out there that are focused on uh, delivering technology specifically for religious organizations. Some are focused on churches, but others are focused a bit more broadly on faith-based organization needs. Additionally, you know, one of the things that Brian had mentioned uh, in the prior webinar that we did with him was you know, don't be afraid to reach out and attend conferences. Go to events like Infocom where you can learn about live streaming and video conferencing if that's a need that you have in your, your organization. You know, really take time to figure out who's got the answers that you need, and connect with them individually or one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to go it alone. And we're here as a resource to try and help make sure that you know that. Now I want to go ahead and jump us into the, the TechSoup website and walk through um, some of the programs that I think would be most interesting based on prior events that we've done with people. So I'm going to share my desktop quickly. Take just a moment for this to become live on your screen. And once that pulls up, I'll walk you through some of the resources we have on TechSoup.org. So you should be seeing the TechSoup.org homepage where you see our logo and where to subscribe for our newsletters. Um, you see the country listed. So if you're not based in the United States, there's a drop down here where you can select your country. We are working to expand so that we are serving organizations in every country around the world except for those embargoed. Um, so you will be able to find pretty much everywhere on the planet listed here. Uh, if you're in the U.S., the TechSoup.org website is the place to come to start with the donation programs. Looking at the site, you'll see a few navigation sources here. Get Products and Services is probably the place you'll spend the most time. And this is where you can browse by donor partner and look at our different partnerships. We have partnerships with, I'm not sure what the number is now, I think it's more than 60 different corporate car partners who have decided that they want to deliver their products to the social goods sector. And that is libraries, nonprofits, churches, depending on the partnership. And they've decided to do that through the relationship with TechSoup, that we make it a little easier for them to deliver that and to confirm that the products that they want to give are going to the organizations they want to have receive them. You can browse by category or solution where you can say, I'm really here because I just want to look at donor and grants management products, or I want to look at fundraising products, or I really new, need a new accounting tool. And you can click through and look at the products in each of those categories. You can also look through by organization type, which is important uh, for this event because we are targeting religious organizations today. So if we go over to that page and click on the religious organizations organization type, it takes us to a page that should load on your screen momentarily that shows the different types of products that are available, highlights the ones that are available for sure for this donation type, 
So we know that these are the top programs that are most requested, Microsoft, Intuit's QuickBooks, accounting products, Bitdefender, which is antivirus and security, and our computers, hardware. So if you need hardware. Also on this page you'll see success stories or quotes from people who are in similar situations as your organization may be. And you'll also find related articles, so for example, what TechSoup offers religious organizations, or how to choose software to manage your church. You'll find blog posts, webinars, forum threads, all of these things that are related to uh, your organization type. And we try to have these pages filled out for every type of organization in our system. But you can see the most popular products. And then we see some other products like Box.org that just launched really recently that's decided to open their programs up to religious organizations as well. Nonprofit Easy, additionally, is uh, an online gift pledge volunteer management product. And so you can see things like this. And then you can also look down here and see all of these other programs for which your organization may be eligible based on being a religious organization. So it's a great place to start if you're not sure where to begin. Um, another great thing that's in this Get Products and Services section that I recommend everybody do whether they're already registered or not yet signed up with TechSoup is to click on Check Your Eligibility. Checking your eligibility is a really quick little quiz that you fill in just a few details about your organization, and then it responds with telling you what programs you are most likely eligible to be able to request donations for. So by filling this out, my organization is one of the following. And based on prior surveys for these types of events, we know that most organizations are registered as 501c3 nonprofits. And we will say that we are located in – I'll pick Michigan today – and the type of organization. And this is these codes here, these are the NTEE codes that I referred to earlier that the IRS uses for their tax identification purposes. So for today's, we're going to go ahead and select religious activities. And this little drop down here adjust to then let me select my subtype. And so I'm going to say that I am a church or synagogue etc. And obviously if you are something different, go ahead and select something different. This is just for example's sake. And then it asks my organization's annual operating budget in U.S. dollars. And do this without any punctuation. So I will say that our annual operating budget is $300,000. And then I click to check eligibility. And the screen should then update with a full list of the programs for which I am most likely able to request donations for my organization. So you can see that it shows me some of the more popular programs that were mentioned on that other page like Bitdefender and Intuit for QuickBooks and Microsoft products. So those are all listed on here. And I can click through on those to learn more about the different donations. Now if I'm already registered, I can go up here to the top right and I can log in. If you are not registered, you can click here to join. The process is pretty simple, just filling in uh, your name uh, as an individual and your email address, your organization's name, and your organization's EIN number or employer ID number. And this is the number that you should have. This is a federal government's way of identifying what your organization's tax status is. So your EIN number. Uh, will show us and pull up in the IRS with that number that you are an actual 501c3 registered nonprofit. If you are not a nonprofit um, and you are affiliated with a big branch of churches or you are um, affiliated with a big branch of a religious order, go ahead and con contact us, call our client services, and they can walk you th through the process to confirm whether you can be in our system or not. Uh, sometimes organizations can be in the system and request donations as part of that parent uh, religious organization. So don't feel defeated if it doesn't let you go through the process online. Just know that you'll need to reach out to us one-on-one -on -one and actually have that conversation. But you can click to join. Joining is free. There is no cost to joining. But I'm going to assume that you're already a member and log in. And I'll just select I'll, I'll go ahead and enter my login information. 
and I'll have a test account that is selected for me up here. So I'm using a test account today. But you should see your organization name appear here when you test. And I'm going to go back to that Get Products and Services and click to check your eligibility again. So even though I'm already in the system, it should show me uh, I have a lot of test accounts in here. So I'm going to pick one um, and click to continue. So usually you may just only have one organization, but you might be requesting donations on behalf of, full, of a full branch of churches or a diocese of churches. So it may ask you to request uh, from that drop-down which organization you're representing. So now it knows who I am, and I'm already registered in the system. And it shows up at the top of the screen, it shows my organization's name. And now I can see here on the list all of those organizations or all of those donation programs again that I am eligible to request donations from. Now, just to speak to eligibility. So different donor partners, every different donor partner that we have, uh, negotiates their own criteria. They can all set their own rules for what kinds of donations they want to give, which products they want to give, uh, whether they give them as a full donation or whether they discount them. And they can also then decide whether they want to donate them to only youth serving organizations or housing organizations. Or they can say, I want to give it to everybody. Or they can say, I only want it to give, uh, to give it to organizations with a budget of less than $100,000 a year or less than a million dollars. And I only want to give up to two licenses, not 10. So they get, to, they get to really negotiate that when they become our donor partner. And as TechSoup, we're beholden to oblige by those negotiations and to ensure that their products that they are giving in good faith are delivered to the organizations for which they want to give. So we are constantly working to expand those donation offerings to make sure that they get to as as wide a swath of social good organizations as possible. But it takes time. So if you came to TechSoup three or four years ago looking for Microsoft donations and were disappointed because you couldn't access them, well, that relationship and the trust we've built with them over many years of working with them has helped open up the gates so that now religious organizations can access all of the donations in the Microsoft program. I'll go ahead and show that one quickly since it is among the most popular products. Microsoft is by far the most generous of our donor partners. And I, I don't mean that in a, in a flippant way. I mean they, they really give the most variety of products and the most volume of products. And they do give them as a full donation. And our admin fees that are, that are collected are a percentage of the retail value. And that goes to TechSoup to help us run programs, keep our website functioning to help run this really complicated eligibility engine on the back end so that we can make sure that donations going to organizations in 121 countries are delivered appropriately. So that's helping to expand the reach of the social good uh, benefits that are coming to our communities. So Microsoft has this huge swath of products, and you can browse them based on desktop products, server products, all kinds of things. Because we know that there are over 200 products in the Microsoft Catalog of Donations, we've highlighted the ones that are most often requested over here on the right side. So if you're needing to upgrade your Microsoft Office, or if you're still running Windows XP or Vista, and you want to upgrade to a new operating system, you can do that. If you need Windows Server, you can do that. Um, Microsoft also recently acquired Skype, and so we even have offers for Skype credits. So if you need to make calls that would cost Skype money, you can get $20 vouchers for a dollar right now with our Skype donation program with Microsoft. So I'm going to go into Windows 8.1 because I have five machines in my pretend organization that I want to upgrade because they're still running XP. And so I can see Windows PC operating system upgrades. And I can see full operating system upgrades. And the only time you would want to request full operating systems is if you have licenses that 
you're not sure where they came from, or computers were donated to you and you don't actually own the licenses, uh, or you have some bootlegged copy, or maybe you're running a home edition and you want to upgrade to the professional edition of the operating system, so you need to replace the whole thing out. There's this program that Microsoft offers called Get Genuine that allows you one time ever in the life of your organization to install full operating systems. So if you have five computers that you need to upgrade and you think you're going to have five more, then you need to request ten of those because you will never be able to request more Get Genuine licenses through the donation program again. If you need those down the road, you'd have to buy them at retail cost because this is a one-time get-out-of-jail-free card essentially <laughs> if you're running um, software that you, know, you don't have the license or access to or you want to make that upgrade from a home edition to a professional edition. Most people, however, come here needing to upgrade their PCs and they want to upgrade from an older version, older operating system to a newer one. So I'll go ahead and select that option on the drop-down. And it sh I believe it's updated. My computer is just freezing on me here. So you can see here the upgrade versions. And on our site we have not only Windows 8.1 with an upgrade, and you can see the admin fees for each of those, but we also have Windows 7. So if you're not quite ready to go to the newest one, you can go to the almost newest one. And the one great thing that comes with Microsoft donations, almost all Microsoft donations in our program, is software assurance. And it sounds kind of jargony, but software assurance is a program that gives you a whole host of benefits, but one of them is the ability to upgrade at no additional cost within two years of receiving your donation. So if today you request Windows 7, and Microsoft comes out with a new operating system within two years, and you want to make the leap to that new one, you'll be able to do that without having to pay again. And you'll be able to upgrade and access that benefit. At the same time, if you upgraded to Windows 8.1, and then you realize, oh my gosh, we've got this mission critical software that is not compatible with our new operating system, and I need to downgrade one machine, well, you can also go into Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center, and you can downgrade too. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So if you select the 32-bit upgrade and later you need the 64-bit, you can do that for no additional cost through Microsoft's Volume Licensing Service Center. And it's one of the benefits of software assurance that's really terrific. Um, another benefit is that you can access, you can you know, request a license for your desktop PC at your office, and you can extend that license to allow you to use it at home on your home machine or on your personal laptop if you're using it for the organization um, as part of Software Assurance's home use program. And I believe it's like $10 to be able to extend it. So it's a really great program and a lot of benefits come with it. So this $12 admin fee is not only saving you hundreds of dollars off of the retail cost, but it's also giving you access to I think thousands of dollars worth of benefits through Software Assurance that most uh, retail purchased uh, licenses don't come with unless you pay a big chunk up front for Software Assurance. So like I said, they really are um, extraordinarily generous with the offers that they put in their donation program with us. And we are happy to see to be able to extend those to you. So I'm going to order my um, request the donations of Windows 8.1 Enterprise Upgrade 32-bit. And I'll view the details here. And you can see at the top of the page it says the donor provider is Microsoft. This is for the Windows platform. There are also Mac uh, compatible platforms available. Format is a download, so keep in mind, definitely pay attention to that when you're going through the process of requesting any products because most of the software products are either downloads or they're cloud services where it may be something that you're connecting to the Internet and logging in to a subscription, for example. Uh, there are not many bo boxed products that are actually shipped to your door and going to, you know, have a disk that you install because many computers these days don't actually have a disk drive. So this is the way that most products are delivered when it comes to software now is that it's something you download to your desktop or that you're using it on the Internet in the cloud as they say. 
Now, if you're requesting hardware, obviously that's going to be something that arrives on your doorstep. So just know the difference when you're looking at these, and this is where you can see that information. So I'm going to request five licenses of this, and I'm going to add that to my cart. But before I do that, it's a great idea to always make sure that one, you're requesting it for the right organization. So if you represent more than one, make sure that you're requesting it on behalf of the correct organization. Read through the description to make sure that this is what you actually want to request. And there's a lot of information here on how to obtain it and what software assurance is. And you know, once you've gone through the process to request, the admin fees are not refundable. You can click on the system requirements, and this will give you the details about the hardware that you need to have. And you know, this is really important, especially if you're running programs on really old machines. You want to make sure that whatever you're requesting is going to work with your hardware. So keep that in mind. And then you can also look at the rules, eligibility, and restrictions. And so it'll show you who this is, you know, this donation is available to nonprofits with C3 designation. And it gives you all of those rules and why and where they may have limitations. So I'm going to assume that I am eligible for all of these things and add to cart. If later on I'm not actually eligible, I'll get a notice in my cart that will flag that item for me and tell me that. I'm not eligible. And if I think that's not correct, that's when I want to get on the phone and call client services or drop an email to them, reread those details in the eligibility and restrictions section, and see if there's something that stands out that might clue me in as to why I'm not able to request it. So now you'll see that my cart has 17 items in it, and it shows all of my admin fees. I have a lot of things in there from prior tours. So that's just one example of how to go through the process of requesting. I'm going to show a couple of other products that, are, that I'd like to highlight for today's event. One is Bitdefender, which was mentioned earlier on. And this is a pretty new program here that provides antivirus and security software. And so they have a few different options, but this is a great alternative. Uh, many Folks come to us asking, why can't I get Symantec donations? And you know, it's a great program that we have with Symantec, but not all organizations are eligible to request it. Bitdefender joined us in our donation program pretty recently, and they were wide open, said, sure, we'll offer it to religious organizations too. So if you're needing uh, antivirus for Mac or PC, uh, th these are some great options for you. And so there's one user and three user licenses, five user, ten user, and I think it even goes up to 50 users. So you can have security for your small office, uh, both for PCs or Macs. And you can request these. Again, go click through to view the details to make sure that it works for your needs. But this is another great program that's available. A lot of people often ask about one of our most popular accounting tools, which is QuickBooks. And I'm going to go to the donor provider, which is Intuit. So you won't see QuickBooks listed on this menu because it's not actually the company. The company that makes QuickBooks is Intuit. They also make Quicken and TurboTax, some popular commercial products out there. So this is the Intuit donation program page where you can see the different offers available for PCs and Macs. And they currently offer the one user license or three user license for PC, and they only have one version for Mac that they offer. We don't have available the online offer at this point, but they do give us uh, the QuickBooks Premier Editions 2015, which includes a whole bunch of different editions, including the nonprofit edition if you use that. So it allows you to request one of these products per fiscal year. So that's another important thing to keep track of is that you're only allowed, you may be only allowed certain quantities of a donation in a given period of time. So for example, if you have somebody in your staff that manages receipts and reconciliations on a daily basis, but you also have an accountant that a couple times a year does audit checks, helps with budgets, and maybe does your 990, then that's something you'd want to have. Make sure that you're requesting that three user license so that that person can request it from off-site and can, can use that donated software as well. So I'll click into the three user license. And again, you can see it's a downloadable, 
downloadable product. Uh, access is for three user licenses. <laughs> Tells me a little bit about it, the major capabilities. And you can see that the editions available, you know, the nonprofit edition is available in it as well as all of these other ones that you may need for different industries or sectors if you have work that um, you do. You know, for example, if you run a thrift shop as part of your nonprofit and the, the products that you collect from the community and sell that help fundraise for your community, you may actually need to use the general business edition. Or you may just need some pieces of those. So you can use uh, the different capabilities in this. And this is one of the uh, top tier versions of QuickBooks out there. So again, lots of details there. And you'll see again on the right side of all of these pages related webinars, blog posts, articles, uh, information about licensing and installation, and other products that you might be interested in that are related. So for example, QuickBooks Made Easy is a training program to learn how to use QuickBooks. So if you are new to that program, that might be of interest to you. So definitely take some time to look around the site and really get an understanding for what is available to you. Many organizations come to us and don't realize that there's quite so that there are so many programs that are open to them. One other one that I want to quickly cover before we move into other topics is our refurbished computers. So a lot of organizations need hardware, and we know that that's a big issue. And you know it's hard to stay current with limited budget, limited time, and limited space. And it's hard to know what to go out and buy if you're looking at brand new con uh, products. Well, we do run some programs here at TechSoup to help you have hardware that's good business grade hardware at affordable prices. And that's our refurbished computer initiative. And we have a whole host of products. So you can click to browse RCI products. And you can see that there are computers, monitors, and tablets available. And there are actually some that are new, not just refurbished. And you can also select the level. If you are needing a high tier, top of the line, business grade, desktop, laptop, or if you are needing a bundle with desktops and monitors, if you need the whole kit and caboodle, you know, there are options available for that. I am going to look at tablets quickly and wait for that to update. And then you can see the drop-down below it has updated where it shows me refurbished and new. And so we partner with a couple of different organizations externally that are factory refurbishers. So they take lightly used business grade products from companies that cycle through thousands of hardware products per year. Like if you have an office like General Motors with 30,000 employees, and you cycle half of that staff through new computers every two years, well, they get those computers from them, for example, and they go through a factory refurbishment process to make them sparkle and make them work well. They make sure that they are clean of any previous owner's data. And they refurbish those, and they warranty them through our donation program here at TechSoup. So you can expect a one to three year warranty on most of the refurbished products in our catalog, which is a lot better than some of the warranties you'll get with, uh, with what you'd buy at Best Buy or any retail outlet without paying an additional fee for that warranty. So it's a great idea to look through the products that are available uh, and see what the capabilities are. These change really frequently. So if you've been in and looked in the past, I would recommend keeping your eye on it, and looking again in a month or two because they change really rapidly. Very frequently they change. Um, so you, know, you can see a whole host of refurbished tablets here, but you can also click to look at new tablets. And again, we have this for laptops and um, desktop computers as well. And you can click in to view the details and read all about the specs that are available on each of these. So we try to make sure that you've got a wide variety of capabilities and technical resources, whether it's cloud services, which I mentioned some of those, but I haven't actually showed any. Uh, if we go to the Browse by Organization type again and look at religious organizations, just to show you an example of some of the cloud products that are out there. Nonprofit Easy is a cloud product. And when we say cloud, it just means that it's 
taking place on the Internet. So you would log into it and access those programs or whatever the product is online. Box.org is file sharing and storage online. Um, so there's quite a few products in here that are online products. Uh, and then there's also other physical products like Headsets.com. If you need headsets for your computer, whether wireless headsets or wired headsets, um, you know, there's great options out there. There are fundraising products. If you need an online storefront, we have a product called Shopify that can help you sell t-shirts and bags and buttons or whatever it is that you produce to help support your programs. Uh, and there's products like Teespring where you can run a fundraising campaign to create t-shirts and people buy the t-shirts and you earn a little bit of the money from that. So a whole host of different products from desktop installed, online cloud products, and hardware available in the donation program. So really take some time to look through those and see what might really help your organization meet its goals. Before I leave the live demo portion, I wanted to quickly show a couple of other sections of the TechSoup site. So I showed the Get, Get Products and Services section pretty exclusively so far. But you can also look at the Community section where we have our events and webinars listed. We also list out upcoming Net Squared, Net Local meetups. We have our community forums where you can post questions, talk to experts, and also share your experiences. So you know, we heard a quote or two from churches that we'd met at the Catalyst Conference. Well, it's people like that that are taking their time to share what has helped their organization save money, or what products they used that they found useful, and sometimes what products they would say, I would never do it again, avoid it like the plague. You know, and that's invaluable resources to be able to get that real world experience. And that's happening in our forums every day. And there's no cost to participate. You just need to join as an individual and you can post and comment and read and share. We also have success stories that other organizations have written to us to say this helped me so much. So if you need more examples of those, we have a lot of those there. And in our resources section, you'll see a tab where you can find articles and how-tos, blog posts, learn about our digital storytelling event that we do every year called Storymakers, and see more webinars like this one. I'm going to quickly, quickly click through on the webinars since that was it's one of our most requested topics on our webinars. And you can see what's coming up, even though this is out of date at the moment. And it's freezing on me. You can also see a calendar of what's happening. And so this will show webinars and it will show events in different cities. So if you're in Orlando, there's a live event. If you're in Vancouver, if you're in Denver. But you can also see the free webinars that we offer from month to month. And feel free to sign up for those. Then below that you can see our previously recorded on-demand webinars. So if you're looking to learn more about QuickBooks, you can click through to view this webinar. And it takes you to a page where you can see the details and see how long it was, learn about the speaker, see additional resources, and click play just to watch it. So we have a whole host of sections of webinar content uh, on our site. So feel free to visit any of those to see what events you might have missed and sign up for any upcoming ones. In addition, I wanted to show you the NetSquared page uh, or website. They have their own site and blog and resources that they share as well. But you can see all around the world that there are meetups happening in different countries. And you can select a NetSquared group and region and find local meetups that are happening where you can connect with tech consultants, tech users, tech um, and, and just people who are interested in technology and how they can improve the use of it for social good. One other last thing I wanted to talk about was Caravan Studios, which is a project of TechSoup's and is primarily focused on creating apps for social good. And so this one is called Range. And I wanted to highlight it today specifically for religious organizations because Range is an app that helps churches and camp counselors and teachers and other people who serve youth in the community help connect young people to a meal during the summer months. And we're coming close to summer here in just a couple of months. And so we spoke with people who work in food insecurity 
in that field about what some of the biggest problems are. And they identified that one in six young people who access free lunches or reduced lunches during the school year, it's only one in six of those who are accessing those lunches during the summer months. And we know that hunger doesn't go away, whether it's January or June. And so Range was created as an app to help you as a service provider in your community who works with young people, help you connect them to where they can find a free lunch. So it's a great resource. Everybody can download it. It's free. It's available on Google Play. It's available on the Windows phone. It's available in the Apple, uh, Apple App Store as well. And it can be downloaded. You can go to rangeapp.org to learn more about that app. But Caravan Studios in general is designing a whole host of apps for social good, and this is just one of them. So you can learn about more of those at caravanstudios.org. And this one I thought I'd highlight just because we're working with religious organizations, and we know that you're often more connected to young people during the summer than school teachers are when summer is out or when school is out. So just jumping back to the slide deck quickly, uh, I want to show just a couple of other resources, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up with some frequently asked questions that we know are often, uh, are often come up during these events. Uh, other technology resources, we, I have links here to the eligibility quiz, our TechSoup Religious Organization section, what TechSoup offers religious orgs, hidden gems for faith-based orgs, uh, and some of the magazines we discussed and some articles we talked about. Uh, earlier on I mentioned that there, are, uh, there were about 9% of people who participated in our poll about their primary mission were schools that were based out of churches. So I want to highlight one resource on this slide that's called the Microsoft Authorized Education Resellers Program. But we'll include links to a couple of different resources because Microsoft offers this huge donation program to nonprofits through TechSoup, but they also have a program that's specifically for educators. So if you are a K-12 educator, whether in a private school or a public school, and you're joining us because your organization or your church, or I'm sorry, your school is located out of a church, you may not be eligible for some of the donation programs here uh, because schools often have their own avenues for accessing donated technology. So Microsoft in particular has their own uh, section by industry that they offer their products. So I would look for volume licensing by industry. If you Google that, and once you're on that page, you can select government or education, and that's where educators should go or administrators of schools should go to request donations on behalf of schools. So I want to go ahead and take just a couple of minutes to address some frequently asked questions that we know come in regularly. Uh, if you're located outside of the U.S., where can you access these donations? And I mentioned earlier that there's a drop-down at the top of the page on TechSoup.org. You can also go to our parent organization website, which is TechSoupGlobal.org, and that's where you can find a full list of our donor partners in different countries around the world. So check that out if you're not based in the U.S. or if you have a program that's based in another country and you want to request donations for them. Uh, we often get questions about how many licenses to request. And I mentioned earlier that you know, my fake organization had five computers that needed to be upgraded, and so I requested five licenses. That's how it is with most of our products, where it's one license per machine that you're installing it on. So make sure you know, it's not just one product that you request and then you install it on 10 machines. You have to request 10 licenses for 10 machines. Unless it's something like where QuickBooks, for example, had one user license or three user license, or Bitdefender had like 1, 5, 10, 20, 5, 50. So you can request bundles like that if they're available on our site, but just make sure you're requesting enough licenses to cover the number of access points you need, whether that's computers or logins. We often get questions about how to change your organization type. And if you've requested donations in the past and you feel like they don't reflect your current work uh, or your organization type doesn't reflect your current work and you need to change that, the best thing to really do is to contact our client services department. And 
you know, whether that's through email or calling them directly because that helps ensure that you uh, have that conversation to make sure that you do fit into the right category. Because sometimes when you go through the process of registering, you legitimately could fit into two different categories with equal validity. <laughs> and so sometimes it really helps to have that conversation. And I'd say if you haven't registered yet and you really feel like you could fit into two different categories, walk through that eligibility quiz twice and go through it one time selecting the one type that you think is valid. And then go through it again and select the second type. And really because we want to make sure that you are in good faith getting the donations that you should be eligible to receive. And so if, if one gives you access to more than the other, then it makes sense if it's equally valid to register for that one. We often also get organizations who request and they don't actually have 990s or they don't have actual C3 status. And so it's a great idea to contact client services again if you don't have a 990 that's filed or if you don't have a C3 status, if you're part of a diocese or a bigger branch of churches or synagogues or mosques and you don't have individual uh, tax status, that's worth contacting us because we do also have some people that help manage big bulk requests of donations for, you know, if you need to request for the entire diocese of San Francisco, for example, um, and your Catholic diocese or something, and you need to request pro products for 50 different branches, we have a team of people that can help manage those type of big bulk requests for affiliates. And they can get all of those 50 branch churches or 50 local branches into our system so that they can request donations on their own. So there are ways to do that. You just need to reach out and let us know. Um, also, you know, just around admin fees uh, and membership, there is no cost to being a TechSoup member. The only thing you pay is when you actually request a donated product. And again, most of those are based on 4 to 10% of the retail market value. So if you go out to Best Buy to buy Microsoft uh, Windows 8 operating system for the premier or professional version that we have available on our site, the retail might be $400. And so you're paying $12, which is a pittance comparatively. So we know it's still money and it's still coming out of your budget. So we you know, help try to make sure that you can plan for that kind of budgeting and work technology into your budget, but we also try to keep those costs as low as possible to ensure that you have access to what you need. So that's just a few questions that I wanted to try and answer that we frequently get. We have some upcoming events that we'd welcome you to join us for, including two on QuickBooks coming up consecutively for new and existing users. And then we'll also have some events on assisting patrons with e-readers, and regularly are hosting these webinars. I'd welcome you to contact us and connect with us at TechSoupGlobal.org, TechSoup.org, connect with us on our Facebook and on our Twitter. Lastly, I'd like to thank ReadyTalk who provides the use of this platform, the ReadyTalk 500 tool which we're using today for us to present these webinars to you on a regular basis. You can find more information about that at TechSoup.org slash ReadyTalk where you can also request this donation. Thanks so much and have a terrific day. Bye-bye.